Come in, dearie, come in. Let's have a look at you. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this is what they call a real Hollywood stage. Crazy man, I ain't never been on no Hollywood stage before. <laughs> you the director? You famous or anything? Like, uh, what movies you done? Anything I might know? <laughs> Perhaps you've heard of my bloody masterpiece, Pit of Evil. How about the dreadfully dire, bloody head of horror? Certainly, killed by death rings a bell. Rabbit babies from outer space? <laughs> Rabbit babies from outer space? <laughs> you put me on? <laughs> oh, Zowie, that's a real far out movies you made. <laughs> well, don't matter. I'm excited about whatever it is you got for me. I mean, it isn't every day a girl gets asked by a Hollywood producer to come and audition for a movie. <laughs> so, uh, what'd you say the name of this film was? Brain Brunch. Oh, sounds dino creepy. <laughs> I don't got no script though, so, uh, what do you want me to do? Cry? Laugh? Be silly? <laughs> Die. Die? Oh, sure, I can do that. The <laughs> problem is try not to laugh though. <laughs> You want us to take my clothes off? I will, you know. Beauty don't bother me then. What do you want me to do? Just do whatever comes naturally. Well, you asked for it. I'm gonna act better than any actor ever acted. You'll see. <laughs> well, what does this happen in the picture? Is it at the end? Correct, dear. This is the end. I admire about you. Consistency. Just when I thought I'd seen it all, you proved me wrong. Again. You see, there's good bad, bad bad, and ugly bad. That was ugly bad. You just ripped away 15 minutes of my life. What'd you say the name of this putrid piece of trash was anyway? A nice day to die? Today's a nice day to die, all right, for me! You call that a picture? I see vomit in back alleys that had more appeal! I see gunk in the bottom of an outhouse pit 
that was more appetizing. And what about those actors and those ugly mugs? Would you kick him in the face with a steel toed Mac Attack work boot before you started rolling film? I seen bulldogs that had prettier faces. But what'd you use for blood in that murder scene, huh? Cherry Kool Aid? And those special effects? Oh, I take that back. There's nothing special about those effects. Granted, my films, not the best. Heck, they're not even good. But that garbage is not even close to being up to horrific standards. Unless you know a good fumigator that cleans movie projectors, I'm going to have to buy a new projector now. I wouldn't pay you to make me a movie if you paid me a million dollars. Don't ever come back unless you've got good garbage. Shirley, treat these two bozos for bags. I don't want anyone seeing them walking out of my studio. Yes, Mr. Delphi. Get out! <laughs> Don't quit. Never quit anything in my life. Nerves of steel, dear boy. Nerves of steel. But how many nerves have we left, master? Even steel eventually rusts. Perhaps it would be wise of us to consider a career change. With or without his money, my next film, The Hating, will be produced. But what of the death scenes, master? We're constantly being grilled over the unconvincing blood and gore effects. Atrocious is what that critic from Gore Galore magazine called it. We've four more death scenes. And to make matters worse, we've a cast of, as Mr. Gelstein would put it, boot-kicked actors. What choice do I have? No one works for free in this town. All of the good actors are working on Real films. If only we had money, we could pay for real stars. Bright, sexy stars. Manly stars like Saul Adams. Or Pete Sweeney. And what about that bodacious bird, Terry Evans? And that hot dame, Belinda Drake? Or... And Thomas. Pardon, Master. Uh, and is just... Get a hold of yourself, man! We're filmmakers. Nerves of steel. Hearts of coal, cast iron. Take no prisoners! The hating will be made by Jove. That's the spirit. It will be the best one yet. Hard words from such hard-looking men. Anything else about you? Hard? Doors open. Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Showbiz. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Mandalore, and this is my cinematographer, Rodney. Charmed. Listen, Luscious Lucy, is it? Sure, Mac, whatever you say. Mrs. Luscious. Miss, I ain't married. Was, for two long years. Got rid of him, though. Ever since then, I've been dancing. 
pays the bills. And that is precisely why we're here, dearie. To discuss paying bills. I'm working on a new film and I have a role that would be perfect for you. What's it pay? Well, uh... Come on! Out with it! How much do I make? Nothing. Up front, that is. But the money will come. I've heard enough. Can I buy you a drink? He's working. Mr. Mandalore is waiting for him on set. Mr. Mandalore is very... Look, do you tell that lousy, two-bit, nudie filmmaker to leave my boy alone? He's warping his mind, filling his head with all these fallacies of fame and fortune. Gustav, back to the Argon. Gustav, where do you think you're going? If this cadaver is a mess, you're grounded, young man. You're worse than a bunch of kids. That's what you are, you know. You're worse than a bunch of kids. Worse than a bunch of kids. You're worse than a bunch of kids, I tell you. There are more meaningful ways to make a living, Gustav. People are dying in the world. They will always need us. Ah! You're late. Gustav's father again, sir. Oh, yes. Poor, disillusioned dad. Gustav here has no voice. And his father, sadly, no vision. Pity. Don't listen to him, Gustav. You are going to be a star. <laughs> and just you wait until you see the beautiful woman we found to play your mother. <laughs> What's wrong? You worry about the lenses, dear Rodney. You see, a filmmaker is more than a filmmaker. He is a magician. So leave the magic to me. Same about your script. But where are all the movie people? I thought they were supposed to be people rushing around with movie clips and clipboards and notebooks and coffee. <coughs> Who's the creep in the mask? What's all this? Your wardrobe, dearie. You must get dressed now if we are to keep our schedule. What about my makeup? Don't I get like luscious? You may recall that I made mention at the pub last night that this is a tiny budget film, a far cry from the typical glamorous Hollywood fair, but a guaranteed hit nonetheless. Oh, don't despair, dearie. Left in my capable, mystical hands, the audience will be none the wiser. What do you mean? When your magnificent beauty streamlined across the silver screen, coupled with your captivating acting performance, Hollywood will come. You really think so? Be yourself. Relax and be natural. That's all I gotta do. Then you got yourself an actor. It helps to know your line. Good point. And don't look at the camera. That is very important. You must never, ever look at the camera. 
That is imperative. You must pretend it isn't there. I'll just do like I do when I'm dancing. Pretend there ain't nobody there. Then I'm all by myself and those pigs in the audience. In this seat, your deformed son, Peter, here. Why is he wearing this sack on his head? Peter has an irreversible ailment of the brain, thus causing a deformation in the cranium and causing leakage from the head. This ailment affects his behavior, personality, causes him to become destructive, volatile, unpredictable! Oh, don't forget scary! As it is meant to be, dearie. As it is meant to be. As it is meant to be. Now, Peter is fascinated with the heavens and gazes upon the stars nightly. On this particular evening, he is looking out his window, gazing up at a lunar eclipse. The eclipse triggers something within him. An intense hating swells within. This impulse overwhelms him, this instinct he cannot control. Gustav, you're here. You, oh, yeah. you enter with a bowl of hot soup, come around and you put it here. And you deliver your first line. Peter finishes lining up the telescope. No, the line under where it says mother. <gasps> Say, what gives? I die here? Surely you read the script last night. I left it in the club. When you want me to die, do you want me to kind of... <gasps> no? Too much, isn't it? How about if I go like this? <gasps> Please. From here. The deadliest of winters cannot be more deadlier than it is to Night. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, no, not too much. Uh, have a more loudy. Volume is not the issue, dearie. What is that? This sentence? It goes... I'm aware of the dialogue. The accent, or whatever it is. What is that. My mommy voice? Please, use your normal voice. Okay. Perhaps a cold bowl of warm soup would do good on such a blistery night. Huh? Eat your boy, don't tell me you're not gonna like that. Stand up! Stand up! Peter! Gustav! Stand! Hood! Down! Scared him. Stop laughing! He's scary! Look how scary he is! Okay, now, now he's gonna come at you with the weapon and you say, Peter, don't help me! Stop laughing! And go. Peter, stop hating me! It's not a funny line! Not, have you ever hacked anyone with an axe before? It's like, ah! no. Okay, here we go. Peter, don't hurt me! Stop <laughs> laughing! Hate. Scared. Go. Peter, no, that. <laughs> this end down. And you. It's, look, look, it's an axe coming down at your head. Oh. Okay. No, okay. Like this. That's how it goes. See how scary that is? Okay, go. Peter, stop hating me! That's good, that's good. That's stop laughing! <laughs>
You stop! <laughs> and alone, you are the worst damn director I have ever seen. You have no talent. You are nothing. You are pathetic. You know that, don't you? You don't need me to tell you that. Your friends tell you. You stop! And you're ugly. You're uglier than the actors that you put in those films. You are the worst filmmaker I've ever seen. <laughs> Get the plastic coverings from the cellar. Like it is in a script, Gustav. Rodney, roll camera. I don't think. I said roll camera! <gasps> Rolling. Action. Is it action? More, Gustav, more! Gustav. Needs your every whim. <laughs> be what Peter would be. Do what Peter would do. Just as it is in the script. Yes. Yes, Gustav. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> The eyeball, the eyeball. Please tell me you got the eyeball. Face, what's left of it? Did you get that? Yes, master. The, 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 the brain, the brain. Zoom in and out on the brain. In and out, yes. <laughs> Time? Half past ten. I guess we've done pretty good here. Guess we're wrapped for the day! <laughs> but the body, Master! What'll we do with it? Get those bed sheets from your room. <laughs> Sorry.
personal garbage collecting service. Heavens no, it's just Mr. Mandalore and Rodney. They're probably filming another one of their little creepy shows. <laughs> you know it, Sister Viddy. <laughs> A filmmaker's work is never done. <laughs> They're my boarders. They are in the movie business. Oh, would you perhaps have met anyone famous or maybe done something I might have seen? Highly unlikely. Mr. Mandalore and his friends, they make spooky pictures. Uh, what's that there in the bag there, Mr. Mandalore? What is that? Some sort of bloodied carcass chopped a bit? Just movie stuff, dearie. <laughs> movie stuff, he says. Why, a few years back, I nearly had a heart attack. Do you remember that when I came upon a bunch of bloody baby bits? Turns out it was just a prop from one of his motion pictures he was filming. Uh, what was it? The Space Invaders? miniature rabid babies from outer space astonishing how real those props look and the amount of cherry kool-aid those two go through this way ladies we'll gather in the den as usual mr mandalore i hope we're not intruding uh, not at all in fact we just wrapped <laughs> that's movie talk for done you of course are welcome to sit in we can all use a little soul cleansing every now and then. Even if it is more than the now. <laughs> Shut the door! I'm speechless. You come in here, begging me for a second chance. And I give it to you, with tremendous reluctance, I might add. Oh, I have seen my fair share of celluloid death scenes in my time, Mandalore. But that was the most vile, putrid, disgusting... I'll meet you up front, Master. Vomit-inducing, dramatized death scene I've ever seen in my life. It's horrific! Such stark realism! Amazing detail! So convincing! And that actress in Erection City! I think you finally got the hang of what we're all about here. No more short films, Mandalore. I want you to make me a feature. A 90 minute grab bag of gore. Just like that. Blood. Foxy ladies. The works! <laughs> well, well, what is it? He'll want more death scenes. But of course. Beautiful girls. And? $10,000 is hardly enough to cover film stock and lab costs, let alone costly special effects and attractive talent. We'd hardly afford the latter on such a skint budget. You worry about the lenses, dear Rodney. I'll take care of... the magic.
Name, please. Hank. Where are you from? In the, uh, the other room over there. I was just brought in by that hammock. That... No, uh, where do you live? In town. Do you have a fixed address? Uh, do you live with a roommate, a friend, a partner? Not that many of those. Friends, that is. Do you have a home? Oh, I have a dump in, got a room, whatever a box got a lid. The part's yours! <laughs> a Rodney here will pick you up at the uh, time and location specified on the card. But obliged. Ah, uh, how much do I get? Oh, you will be paid handsomely for your uh, services. A hot dog! But only on one condition. Condition? That you don't tell a living soul that you have been cast. My films are extremely, uh, secret. Of course, you can feel free to tell anyone you like once the film has been uh, completed and ready for release. Uh, no one's going to believe me anyhow, even if it's not is. But, uh, but I won't. Do I have to memorize any words or anything? Don't worry about the script for now. And remember, not a word to anyone. Big smile. I could shoot her from a low angle. Uh, Seriously, so close ups? It should work. The part's yours. <laughs> All right. Oh, just uh, show up at the time and location of the card. All right. I'll be there. Not meant to be disturbed. Yeah, get out of here, watermelon head. That's cruel. Oh, I was only teasing. Get out! Go on! Cut! Actors are excused and wrapped. Master, don't you think it wise that perhaps we shoot some reaction shots? Could call, old boy. Clay, please, a, uh, a look of horror. You've just seen your girlfriend murdered right before your very eyes. <sighs> Cut! <laughs> well, that's a wrap, dearie. <laughs> Time is of the essence. Sister Bibby is due back at 10. That gives us 20 minutes for blood splattery fun and 30 minutes for cleanup. Doing splendidly for time, dear boy. Splendidly. Yes, master! Gustav, fetch the look like hobos. <laughs> Greetings, my good friends! How are we today? I gotta be done by nine. Oh, you will be done by nine, I assure you. Well, I got time. The good actor must take his time. You know, I've heard about that. To really nail the part. Oh, you will nail the part, Mr. Jackson, most assuredly so. You two are on the couch. Hey. Peter here has entered the room. He has hurt feelings. <laughs> the moon is full, which means, unfortunately, dead time. <laughs> okay, so uh, tell us what to do. Select us. Just do whatever comes <laughs> naturally. <laughs> Lights! Camera! Action! Hey, wait a second. 
fucking throw me out the rehearsal or something? Lost grease balls. We're closed. Where's my friend? Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's going on here? This creep won't leave us alone. These, these alley tramps. They, they, they took my friend. They took your friend? Yeah, yeah. He, he's always had eyes for this one here, and then, and then he spent months saving up money for a little smooching, and then they went off together, and, and I ain't never seen him since. I've never even seen his friend Jack. Honest. No, no, they're killing him. I, I tell you, they. Kill the Italian and Mick and uh, Stinky Pete. Jack, you know we know nothing about killing. Business is slow, Jack. We can't afford to be offering our own customers. Vagrant was picked up by the authorities. We've no actor for the scene. And what are you doing here? I beg pardon, sir. What are you doing here? Informing you, sir. Get out there and find someone else to kill, then. <laughs>
Hey, I know you. You're one of the movie guys who live in Sister Biddy's house, aren't you? Hello. Actually, I'm just a cinematographer. What a darling European accent. So what brings you to this end of town? Just taking a bit of a breather. Where's the other guy? Rewriting. Plotting. I wasn't required, so I thought I'd get away for a while. Uh, you know, refuel. Got the best fuel this side of town. I was hoping you might say that. A large, please. Black. What you working on? A horror picture. I know someone who died to be in a film. <coughs> He's a very good actor. He had a few parts in some plays. Shouldn't you be serving? My shift is done. I'm just waiting for my ride. Where are you headed? 42nd. It's not far. I should probably walk. Goodness knows I could use the exercise. Working at joints like this will do that to a figure. No, no, no. You shouldn't be walking in these parts at this time of night. Especially all alone. It's okay. I got a guardian angel looking over my shoulder. Are you a Christian? Oh, I'm a fanatic. No kidding. You should join Sister Biddy's Bible class. Perhaps I shall. It's very inspirational. You'll wonder how you ever managed through life without it. So you're filming there tonight at Sister Biddy's? Yes. You went all the way across town for a coffee? The, the drive gave me the opportunity to think and refocus. Sister Biddy must really like you to let you make creepy movies in her house. It's only when she's traveling into the city to see Father Ramesses that we shoot there. Which fortunately for us is quite often. She's incredibly fond of him. He's a very nice man. Have you ever met Father Ramses? I regret to say that I've not had the pleasure. <laughs> this is my boyfriend, Rex Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> boyfriend? And really? Pardon me, fiancé. <laughs> Rex and I are getting married. <laughs> That's right, till death do us part. Rex, this is... Oh, well for shame. Don't I feel as dumb as the doornail? I don't even know your name. He's a boarder at Sister Biddy's, lives with a roommate. They're both in the movie business. <laughs> well, I'll be. I'm an actor. You think you might have something for Rex? Yes. Yes. I think we might indeed. <laughs> Real looker, this one, Master. We may not have to bother them with any trick angles at all. I'll be the judge of that, Rodney. Bring him in. Wow, you're so pretty. <laughs> oh, <you're> just... <laughs> <laughs> He's ready for you. Great. Unfortunately, <laughs> only Rex is permitted on set. Rex. Mr. Mandalore is very particular about that. You wait out here. You don't like being nervous in there anyways. How long am I going to be gone for? Unfortunately, you'll be gone a very long time. A very long time. <laughs> 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 
Here, you take the keys. Maybe down at the soda spot. We can celebrate later. Splendid, Rodney! Splendid! <laughs> you really outdid yourself with this one! <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Mr. Mandalore. Rex Tyson. I'm really looking forward to working with you. And I, you. <laughs> I, I didn't get a, I didn't get a script. Uh, but your cameraman here mentioned that I'm going to be knocking off a bit of a, an action sequence, uh, <laughs> and then uh, doing some heavy dialogue later. Yeah, that, correct he was. I had some devil. Correct he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are going to tap into your uh, freshness, get the high energy performance out of the way first, and then move on to the lighter, more relaxing aspects of the scene. <laughs> you die at the end of the film, quite violently, I might add. <laughs> now you're here reading a book. Oh. Gus Arthur, who plays the killer, he's going to come in and he's going to lunge at you with a weapon. You quite simply scream. <laughs> and then we cut. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this will be a breeze. <laughs> Camera rolling. <laughs> Action. <laughs> <laughs> Biddy is uh, away for the evening. I've come for my boyfriend. Are you finished with him? Boyfriend? Uh-huh. <laughs> boyfriend! <laughs> Rodney, am I to understand this young lady correctly? She is here for her boyfriend? Correct, Master. The young handsome bloke. Apologies, Anne. We've finished him off earlier than expected. Oh, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> Except, I've been waiting for him at the soda spot all night and he never showed up. Do you know where he is? He left. Left? To go for a walk. For a walk? Yes, dearie. Uh, he stepped out after we finished the scene to get some fresh air. Odd. Well, he has been known to need time away after a performance. <laughs> oh well, I'll take a drive around town and see if I can spot him. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll see you soon, Anne. Of course. <laughs> I didn't know he had a girlfriend, I swear it! 
I found him wandering aimlessly down an alley when I took him. Appeared to be a shiftless bum. And what happens when she doesn't find him? She will go straight to the police, and I'll give you one good guess who the police will go straight to. We stick to the story, Master. He left to get some fresh air and went. Ah! Well, we can't use the sea. We'll have to remove it from the picture. Not necessarily, Master. There were no markings on the body. I made sure of that. And his face, I made certain focus was intentionally soft and blurry on most of his close-ups. It'll work, Master. I assure you, it will work. I'll be the judge of that. After I've seen the rushes. And if I'm not convinced otherwise, you are out of a job. Clean all this up. Take care of the body. I'm disappointed in you, Gustav. You promised me before you went out with those hooligans that you were going to clean that furnace. If you're going to live under my roof, you're going to abide by my rules. As far as I'm concerned, this movie career of yours is over, such as it was. You're neglecting your job. Sweet mother of Jesus. It's a good thing the family didn't look too close. This looks like it's been colored with crayons. You've got to know your place, Gustav. Just as the world will always need. Policemen, firemen, doctors, they will need undertakers. People die all the time, and families want sensitive and inspirational ceremonies and burials. But movies? Where does it fit in the scheme of things? Grown people, playing with toys. The world will survive without movie people. But well, you take away the surgeons, you take away the doctors. It... Where are you going? I'll go outside and I'll fix the arrangements. You get in there and you clean that furnace. Don't talk back to me. Fine then, get out and don't come back. I don't need you. By the way, Mr. Morris. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, Anne. Hi, Gus. Is Rex in today? Funny thing. I was just going to ask you the same thing. He didn't come in for work today. Did he call? No. No, and it's not like him not showing up for work without a phone call. No, it's not like him at all. Say, you okay? What gives? You look a little, um, off color today. Gus, I think something's happened to Rex. Come again? Well, I dropped him off at Sister Biddy's yesterday. The old Bible lady? There's something he ain't telling me. Oh, it's nothing like that. There's some filmmakers that live there, some boarders. Anyway, he was hired on to act in their film, Mandalore's newest movie. You're pulling my leg. That fellow who's been scaring up the country, uh, what do they call him, the uh, Master of Massacre? And he's staying at Miss Biddy's house? Ain't that a kick in the head? That's not important. What is important is the last time I saw Rex, he was at Sister Biddy's. And where were you? They wouldn't let me watch. Mandalore's very particular about those type of things. They told me they were going to be a while with him, so I left. I came here for a cup of coffee. When I returned to the house, they said Rex had left. That's odd. Did you, uh, cruise the neighborhood, go looking for him? Yeah, but I only saw the usual denizens of the night. Hookers, bums, shady characters, hoodlums. 
You lose somebody, miss? Detective Bakeman. I'm a detective. Maybe I can help. you a few questions? I'm really rather busy right now. I have a deadline. Hey, don't we all? You, me, my mother, your mother, Rex Tyson. Name anything to you? No, should it? Well, according to his fiance, it should. Seems her husband to be agreed to be in your movie. She never heard hide nor heaven of him since last night. Claims you told her that he just upped and left. Went for a walk. Oh, that fellow! <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, well, that, uh, that was in fact what happened, indeed. Uh, he was feeling nauseous, as many actors do who uh, partake in my intense death scenes. <laughs> I advised him to go for a walk, to clear his air. Uh, he didn't return. <laughs> Did he say where he was going? He was rather feted looking and pale. Uh, he wasn't really in the mood for talking. Uh, didn't really say anything at all, in fact. Uh, no, no, he didn't say. Mind if I talk to your crew? See if he said anything to any of them on the way out. I don't have a crew. Uh, that is, uh, except for my camera operator, Rodney. Uh, but he was with me the entire time. Rodney, where can I find him? He lives with me. Is there anybody else here he might have talked to? As I stated, it was only me and Rodney. There were no other actors. All right, well, I apologize for taking up your time, Mr. Mandalore. Probably just a case of nerves. Probably figures this is his big acting break, and next thing you know, there's gonna be all these women knocking on his door, <laughs> looking for a piece of him, you know what I mean? And he's gonna get married after that? I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, well, thank you for your time, Mr. Mandalore. You're welcome. <laughs> One more thing. I've seen this one. That scene where the girl gets her tongue pulled right out of her mouth like that? Yeah. Yuck! I've seen Death Mandalore. I've seen it up close, and plenty of it. How do you do it? How do you make it look so real like that? Special effects, detective. And nerves of steel. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. All right, well, uh, here's my card. You call me if you think of anything. Certainly. When the king heard this news, he was struck with fear and very much shaken. Sick with grief because his designs had failed, he took to his bed. There is remained many days overwhelmed, however, sorrow for he knew he was going to die. Death! That's another subject we'll talk about. Miss Thomas, are you all right? Oh, I'm sorry, Sister Biddy. Yes, yes, I'm really. No, Sister Biddy, I am not all right. Well, I do want to talk about it. Sister Biddy, is Rodney at home? Uh, I believe so. Would you excuse me, please? I really must talk to him. Oh, I'm sorry, I must confess I'm really not up to this right now with my fiancé missing at all. And I believe Rodney may be able to help. Yes, of course. Just down the hall, two doors to the right. It's open. I'm sorry for disturbing you, Rodney, but I was hoping I might have a word with you. If it's regarding Rex's whereabouts, I'm afraid that... Uh... May I? Oh. 
about that night. When he left, did he say anything to you? Did he even make any noises or, or look a certain way? I'm afraid I don't understand. What I'm getting at is this, Rodney. You know as well as I do that his mood was bright that evening. He and I were on the best of terms. So there is no way that he just decided then and there that he would leave me and call off the engagement. Men are a strange and weird breed. Not Rex. Something happened. What happened that night? What was the scene? What did Rex have to do? Why was it so secretive that I couldn't watch? As you may or may not know, Mr. Mandalore's films are shrouded in secrecy. It's all part of the mystique. Was his scene? Rex's? A death scene? Yes, it was. It's quite common for one of Mr. Mandalore's actors to become agitated or queasy following a death scene. They always recover. I wish I would have known. Beg pardon? If I'd have known being in a Mandalore film would have such a traumatic mental effect, I'd have advised him against it. My sincerest apologies. Rex was a strong man. He'll be back. Master! Beg your pardon, miss. If I could have a moment or two in private with Rodney. I was just leaving. You absent-minded miscreant! Selfish motivations nearly cost us our careers! How so, Master? You know who paid me a visit tonight? Detective Bakeman! A detective! He was looking for the actor. Her boyfriend! A detective? Blimey, but how He's I... on his way to see you! What'll I do, master? What'll I do? Straighten yourself! Nerves of steel, you miserable crumb! Nerves of steel! <laughs> now listen. The actor didn't say a word. He went for a walk. He left on his own accord. That is what I have been telling Anne. That Anne! 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 It is man's greatest weakness, the femme fatale. It was Adam's undoing at the Garden of Eden, and it will be ours if we are not careful. What of the footage? Did you cut it in? Did it work? Yes. It did. In fact, it's brilliant. You're lucky! You'll live to shoot another one of my films. If there will be another. Of course I'll answer questions. It is in his contract. 
So, uh, what's next? Another film. <laughs> uh, have you ever thought of doing anything other than horror? You make reference to a work of drama, perhaps? <laughs> a comedy? A cartoon? <laughs> ha! Why? Is what I have to offer too much for you? Can you not stomach my masterpieces? Ha 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 ha! <laughs> Only in your dreams, dearie. What should I say? Only in your <laughs> nightmares. As long as there is a Mandalore, the world will continue to churn its stomach and disgorge itself at the theater. <laughs> Horror has a new face, and its face is Mandalore, master of the massacre! <laughs> I, uh, I heard it said that Solomon Adams has expressed interest in a Mandalore film. And Belinda Drake. Not in his lifetime. Uh, we are actively pursuing some name actors for our next film. I do not work with pretentious, arrogant Hollywood fakes. I choose who acts in my films and who dies in them. Well, you are bound by contract to make three more films with horrific pictures, Mandalore, so don't ruin it for yourself. Ahem, uh, it's widely rumored that you have connections with some crooked medical professionals and body snatchers who provide you with real organs and bodily fluids for your death scenes. Now, is this true? As I stated previously, I will not reveal my cinematic secrets. It's worse than that, I'm afraid. He killed his actors. <gasps> How else does he get his mutilation scenes to look so real? Why else do you think he doesn't let anyone else on his movie set? That's preposterous. <laughs> no, no, no. This is good. This will draw more publicity. Go ahead and tell them, Mandalore. Tell them what you did to my Rex. How you killed him and filmed it, and then shamelessly showed it to us all tonight on the big screen. My boyfriend, Beyonce, played the character whose head was smashed open by a cleaver. You all saw it. You're all witnesses to this man's dastardly deed. <laughs> <Dear me. laughs> uh, this is a moment that I shall cherish for as long as I live. <laughs> for you have paid me a compliment that not even a, an Academy Award can bestow. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. <laughs> Where is that? Just as Betty Crocker would not reveal the secret ingredient of her succulent pie crust and filling. So it is with I. I am afraid that the secrets to my celluloid magic will accompany me to the grave, dearie. You're mad! <laughs> to a degree, I agree with you. For I believe that all good filmmakers need a little <laughs> madness in their soul. <laughs> okay, I believe we've run out of time. So uh, thank you all for attending the premiere. And we look forward to reading your reviews in tomorrow's paper. Good night. Hello, Mrs. Tyson. It's Anne, Anne Thomas. Are you home? Miss Thomas, we was just talking about you. Anne, please tell me you found my Rex. I'm afraid that I have, Mrs. Tyson. I suggest you take in Mandalore's latest film, Brain Feast Detective. Oh, uh, I don't know about that, Miss Thomas. I was thinking about checking out the premiere last night, but uh, I had a big meal for dinner. I think it's your duty to see that film, Detective Bakeman. You'll find one of the murder scenes particularly interesting. Oh? Sorry to say this, Mrs. Tyson, but... There's a death scene in the film, and 
I'm almost certain it's Rex. What? That's right. Oh. He's murdered oh. right there on the film. What oh. makes you say that? Because I know it was Rex. Did you see any uh, distinguishing features or recognizable markings? Physical characteristics that would make you think it was him? Well, no, but... But I just know it was Rex. Oh. Please, for me and Mrs. Tyson, see the film and judge for yourself. I'm telling you that Mandalore kills people for real and uses the footage in his movie. And I'm telling you this is nonsense. Well, look what you've done. Come on now, Mrs. Tyson. I'm sure your son is fine. How can you say that? Miss Thomas, the only thing that happened to Rex is he got a case of premarital jitters and skipped town, so to speak. Being in this film probably just went to his head and he ran off to... Hollywood or something. I know, Rex. He's not like that. I agree. My son wouldn't just don't believe. Look, I gotta go. Try to get some rest in the meantime. The both of us, I'm sure he'll turn up. I know how hard this is. Do something to take your minds off things. Maybe have a little lunch. Believe me, he's gonna be back in no time and we're all gonna have a good laugh about all this. Attempt the word with you, will you mind? For how can anyone refrain from speaking? Ponder that for a moment, ladies. I think that sums it up for the week. Thank you, ladies. It's been a pleasure, and thank you for coming. Ah, yes. Of course. You, you are welcome in this house any time. Thank you so much for your patience with me. The body in there is fresh. Nice and fresh. Just the way you like it. Now you'll go in. Go, go directly for the guts this time. An now, what did him. you do to him, you fiend? <sighs> settle, dearie, please, settle. Would you <laughs> settle if you found this? Splendid! You found our prop! This isn't a prop, you filthy animal! This is my fiancé's finger! And this is his promise ring! Dearie... <laughs> Deary, deary, this is all a misunderstanding. I am so meticulous in my work that I do go to extremes to make sure that everything is exact. <laughs> Liar! I saw Brain Beast! I saw, as did hundreds of others, how you murdered Rex Tyson! It was all there up on the silver screen for the whole audience. Those were my Rex's eyes you plucked from their sockets. Those were my Rex's brains you bashed in, smashed together. Those were my Rex's entrails you yanked from his body's cavity and then ripped apart. <laughs> Rodney, get this! Rodney, get behind the camera and film this now! Thank <laughs> you.
How do you like her now? Bobbing for it. That's nice. Why don't you go in for another kiss, huh? How does she taste? No, no. You know, she must really love you, Rodney. Look, she's giving you her heart! I think it's a good bet that old Rex came back and took her away to La La Land, where they'll live in happily ever after. You know, kids. As for the whereabouts of this Mandalore and his so-called film crew, my guess is they've gone to live in some fancy mansion in Beverly Hills. Oh, I, I just wish I'd had the chance to say goodbye. Well, he and that sweet British chap, they were the perfect boarders. Oh, but they're gone. God be with them. Say honestly, I, I'm not sure I'll miss it. Miss it? You know, the odd people dropping in at all hours of the day, the, the movie props being left about the house. Oh, I tell you, when Miss Thomas found that fake finger, I thought she was going to have a heart attack right then and there. And that was the last time you saw her, eh? She up and left after that, screaming hysterically. Oh, and she was such a sweet girl. She'll always be welcome back in the Bible group. Well, I thank you for your time, Sister Biddy. You have a good day, ma'am. time you stoke those flames, our energy bill skyrockets. We had four cremations last month, yet we paid an amount equal to above 15. Don't know what intarnation you were cooking up in there, but whatever it was, you cut it out. What are you, a pyromaniac? Now, get in here and give me a hand fixing up this stiff. And she'd better do a better job than the last one. A five-year-old with finger paints could have done better. <laughs> 